Well, hello friends. It's been a bit since I've been able to do this. So I had a second floor remodel and I was not able to use my dining room for a good part of this year. But with Thanksgiving coming up, I'm excited to do another hopefully inspirational dining room table for Thanksgiving. So what I like to do is show my dining room and hopefully you can take bits and pieces, use it maybe in your own home over the holiday season. So the whole thing is when it comes to a table, sometimes we leave it till last. Sometimes we're so busy we don't think about it. But doing some type of fun table presentation, table centerpiece, tablescape, is fun. And this is one that you can actually do days before Thanksgiving and get it ready. And I'm gonna show you mostly things I have. It uses collections I have, things like that. My big thing when I start, we're gonna talk about the centerpiece. Right now you're probably thinking, this looks like a Harry Potter with like the hat that they use, the sorting hat. It's not. We're gonna talk about this vintage cornucopia that I'm super excited about. I like to think of a table in layers. So how can we layer a table to actually help us achieve kind of a textured feel and look? And I think that's really important. So I love my wood table, but I am gonna put a runner on it this year, more just because it adds this center element. And I think what's nice is there's this juxtaposition of what's gonna feel like a little bit more of an elevated runner, which is what this is, with a little bit more of a rustic centerpiece. And you know, when it comes to Thanksgiving, it's about being thankful, but it's also about the harvest season. I live in Iowa. Harvest is still going on, wrapping up now by the time this is coming together. And the thing is, it's fun to enjoy that harvest season in a way we can. And this is one of the ways is with Thanksgiving. So what we're gonna do is start with this textured piece. This could be burlap even. If you have a piece of burlap, cut it off. If you have something in your cabinet, use it. And then we're gonna start building on top of this. So what I wanna do next is talk about my center. Now I'm using a big pewter platter, kind of like a charger, just cause I think the rustic color of pewter, which is kind of a dull silver color, looks really good at Thanksgiving. Now obviously your table might be bigger, it might be wider, might have more people at it. And I will say I'm a maximalist. So that means when I'm having people over, yeah, I have a full centerpiece and I like it that way. So what I have here is a vintage paper mache cornucopia. Now I just found this at an antique show this year. If you watch my stories, my daily stories, I talk about this and those stories go on Facebook and Instagram and I love to talk about the finds I have. This is one of them and I love to use it then instantly. So what I'm gonna do is build off of this, what almost feels like a garland but not. So I have some wonderful friends and neighbors, the Lindines, who grow some gorgeous colored corn every year and always are so kind to let mom and I come get it. I didn't get a chance to get over there, but mom went and picked this with them. And look how beautiful it is. So what I did was I tied some of that together and I'm gonna use it really almost like a garland. See how I have it coming out longer kind of towards the end? That's what I want on each side of this. And this is just something, you know what? I save this year to year. Do not put it in a place where you get mice. If you have a shed outside, don't even think you could put it in there. Because if you're like me, there are field mice and you don't get them all. And like I had a few of these out in my shed. You know what I have now? Cobs, empty cobs, because the mice like them. So put them in a good place where you're not gonna have that. If you live in a city or if you don't have mice, you probably think I'm crazy. If you live in the country, rural area, welcome to Iowa, that's what I do. So in my cornucopia, you can see inside of it isn't necessarily that pretty. But what I am gonna do to start is take some of that husk from some of this corn, just put it inside just to give something in the background that will kind of hide some of the parts that aren't as pretty. So now we can build this cornucopia of sorts and that's gonna be with things from harvest. So things I grow, things I have, I don't grow all this. Some pumpkins though, you could do squash, you could do gourds. I was saying Thanksgiving since it's kind of the wrap up of the fall season before we go heavy into Christmas. Some of us I know go heavy into Christmas before Thanksgiving, that's okay too. But it's a time to use up maybe what you have around the house. So maybe you have some squash, maybe you have some gourds. I also like to pick up things in a grocery store that I'm gonna use. Pomegranates, I love pomegranate seeds. And they're becoming, they're in season usually late fall, maybe into December and through December. This color and texture is gorgeous at Thanksgiving. So don't feel bad going, I've used pears before. Both green Bartlett are beautiful, or red Bartlett, or the red Anjou. All those add texture and color that you can use. You know, this is all stuff that we're not using flowers that are, I love flowers, but instead of that, we're gonna use things that we can keep using or things that we've had for quite a few months and then can still use. I'm also gonna use oranges because if you notice, I'm picking tones that go together. And some of the oranges I did, I stuck the cloves into because it's pretty. So you can just take whole cloves, stick them in. And then what's great is as these dry, they smell so good. Those essential oils from the orange get released with the clove. And then by Christmas, they'll be dried up and kind of starting to shrivel. 
Just keep them in a bowl, they're beautiful. But you can do a mixture of the two. So what I'm gonna do is start just layering some of this in here, kind of building out from it until we have, feel full and harvested. As I'm placing the last gourd here, I do like to say two things. One, a table runner is not always the perfect size, is it? This is a long table runner that I can use if this table is extended. It's too long for here. So I use the trick my mom always used. She always wanted to make sure she stretched the money as far as she could. So she'd buy the largest tablecloth she always could. And then when we had people over, if it wasn't the largest table, she would fold under the tablecloth. And yes, you will notice a seam. It's usually we place that where we sit so no one knows but then it matches and your plate will go over that. So it's a way to make sure you can flub and use what you have. That, just like my shoes, mom always got me the biggest shoes. I, oh, I ended my shoe growth with having a pair of shoes that never fit because mom always thought I'd grow into them. I didn't. What we have here then are some walnuts, whole seeds, which what I like to do with these then is fill in the cracks. So if you just have places where you feel like, you know what, I want a little something. I want a little something special. Maybe it's like up here around the cornucopia itself. What I like is it's like a harvested feeling. So you can kind of just have it flowing off, put little piles of them. You know, if you want to, you could get really kind of fun and you could start having, you know, nutcrackers there that people could actually use them too. That would work. I, I love doing that at Christmas. So I find no reason you can't do it now also. And just kind of a fun thing to add in some things for interest, but also then it's food. You're gonna use it later on. So I always think a table needs candles. I'm gonna use something rustic I have, which are these brass handled holders. What's nice is it does catch any of that, that wax. Now when I'm going to place them, I kind of look where it's gonna work. I actually kind of like this one in here. I might have to move. It might be nice if I could squeeze it more back in there like that. And then I can put this up here, maybe put the pomegranate up here. Look at all these colors. So the pomegranate's working well with the corn, the orange is working well with that squash and gourd kind of situation going on. So now we can talk about plates. Use what you have. Maybe you have all white every day. That's great. Maybe you have a china. You like to use it at special times, use it. I'm a collector. And recently I found some great old Thanksgiving China. I love Johnson Brothers China, especially this is the His Majesty pattern. It's one of my favorites. It's, it was hard for me to find, but I found a whole 12 piece place setting. I think I'm missing one or two coffee cups. I love it. And I even have a platter to go with it. But this is the time we use these things. We, you know, we collect things, we keep things nice for special reasons. And I think it's those special moments like this these are the times that then people remember and take notice. You know, whether you have kids, you know, growing up, we had special plates we only usually used on like Christmas Eve or around Christmas at different times. So it's fun to use them and create those memories, whether it's just for family coming over, maybe you and a loved one. And that's what creates that special time. So with those, I will build on top of that. So I like to have a mixture of maybe some type of water glass and some type of wine glass, usually water, wine, and I don't follow the rules of the whites, of the reds. Usually Thanksgiving we have white wine or something sparkling anyway. So whatever works for you. I do like to add color in if I can do it. These have some nice texture on it too, which I really like. It just adds a little bit of oomph, a little bit of something special. And I think it's all that eclectic kind of additions that can really make a difference on creating a nice table. Now I know some people, maybe you're one of them, are gonna think there's too much going on on here. There is too much going on in here. That's what I love about it. To me, a table reflects the personality possibly of the host. My personality, <laughs> it's this table. It's things I love and it's creating those moments. I'm gonna finish putting these around before we really finish setting it up. You know, I always think, why not go all out when you can? I, I have memories of, I don't think people do this anymore. When I was growing up, we had a silverware that my mom got for her wedding. Um, like an Oneida silverware, but we kept it nice because she had it from her wedding when my parents got married and it was in a closet and we only got out that box at special occasions. We should use things every day, that's the thing. But if you have something, I still keep something in a box because there's some type of nostalgic reason to do it. But if you have it, use it. Use it at these special times. Use it because you have it. There's no other reason. So at the end here, we have to light the candles to finish. Now, I have one of these newfangled, I really like them, electric rechargeable candle things. It makes this little current that just will start a candle. And you know, I probably should have pre-started these so they started easier, but 
I really like them because you don't have them that like gas thing that you're trying to start them with. Look how nice that is. And you can just recharge them. I don't know if you've heard of them. I just found them recently and I really like them. So we don't want to get this close to the paper mache thing because we don't want that to start on fire <laughs> or any of the dried bits. But let's just knock that up a little bit. That's perfect. And now we have our Thanksgiving table. So what are the big takeaways from this? I like to think that they're be inventive and use things maybe you have. Maybe things from your yard. Maybe you have some foraged dried hydrangeas or other plants or flowers you can use. Maybe you too have some corn like this that's the multicolored and dried that you can use and save year to year. Maybe you have some faux gourds even from your house. Maybe you have some whole nuts. Maybe you have oranges in your fridge or pomegranates. If not, pomegranates are really good. You should seed them on your own. They're delicious. All these things can be used again, have other lives, maybe using collections that we have, special things in our life from family members. That's what the holidays are about to me. It's those moments and those special times that create the memories that we're gonna pass on. And I hope that's what you can see from this. This is about creating a memory so when people come over, it's something special. So this is what I'm gonna be doing at my sister's house this year at Thanksgiving, because that's where we're celebrating with my nieces and nephew. My mom, we're all gonna be there. And I hope you can do the same. So share this video around so others can see. Maybe some inspiration too. Check my website, wiseguy.com, for all the recipes that will be on my Thanksgiving table this year. And until next time, I hope you have a nice, full, harvested table. <laughs>